In this video, we're going to talk about how to make the Pierce Crystal Oscillator Circuit. So this circuit uses a JFET or a Junction FET transistor. So this transistor looks like a typical NPN transistor. It's a three terminal component. This is number one, two, three. Pin one corresponds to the drain. Pin two corresponds to the source. Three corresponds to the gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment to draw this circuit. So first I'm going to start with the JFET, which you can draw it this way. My circles are terrible. But this here is the gate terminal. This is the drain. And here we have the source. Attached to the drain pin is going to be RD. And then that's going to go to the positive voltage. In this case, I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. Now, I don't have a resistor that connects the source to the ground. The output will be taken from the drain terminal, and we're going to use a bypass capacitor. In my test circuit, I've used a 220 microfarad capacitor. And for RD, I set it to 1K. I used a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Now, there's another resistor between the gate of the JFET and ground. So for that resistor, I use a 1 mega ohm resistor. We'll call this RG. Now the crystal oscillator is going to be connected between the gate and the drain terminal of the JFET. So the crystal oscillator um, symbol can be represented by two metal electrodes separated by a quartz crystal. So it looks like that. And then we're going to have a bypass capacitor between the crystal and the drain of the JFET. Now for this capacitor, I've used a 220 microfarad uh, value as well. So I kept it the same. Now there's also another capacitor between the gate and the ground. And this capacitor is very useful for making the circuit work. You need it in order for this to work, so we'll call this C. In my first trial, I've used a 455 kilohertz ceramic crystal oscillator. And for the most part, the frequency of this circuit is determined by the characteristics of this crystal oscillator, as well as the value of C. But it doesn't really change much or deviate much from this value. Now, the capacitance that I've used to obtain an output frequency of 455 kilohertz is a 160 picofarad capacitor. This circuit doesn't work for all the values of C. It only works for a narrow range of C values. So for this particular circuit with these resistances and the 9-volt battery, it ranged from 100 picofarads to 2 nanofarads. Outside of that, the circuit didn't function as well. If you use a capacitance that's higher than 2 nanofarads, let's say like a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, the circuit will fail to oscillate. Likewise, if the capacitance is too low, the circuit will introduce distortion. But within this range, for this particular crystal oscillator, the circuit worked well. A nice sine wave was generated at the output. But when using a 160 picofarad capacitor, I got a frequency of 455 kilohertz. So that's the Pierce crystal oscillator circuit. It's very simple to design. It doesn't require many components. And it works pretty well. In fact, for this value, the peak output voltage, let's change the color, was measured to be around 3.8 volts. Now let's go over some other values that were measured in that circuit.
So when using a 3.2 nanofarad capacitor, this is what I measured using a multimeter, the circuit failed to oscillate. Now using a 2.3 nanofarad capacitor, the output voltage was measured to be 3.7. This is the peak voltage. And the frequency was 448.8 kilohertz. So it wasn't too far from 455. Using a 1.54 nanofarad capacitor, peak voltage was around 3.9. The frequency was 449.3 kilohertz. And then using a 0 0.309 or a 309 picofarad capacitor, the voltage was still about the same, but the frequency was 453.3 kilohertz. And using a 0.222 nanofarad capacitor, the frequency was 454 kilohertz. And then using a 160 picofarad capacitor, it was 455, which is the ideal number because it matches the resonant frequency of the crystal oscillator. Now going below this capacitance value, this should be a, an F, not an H. Now using a 97 picofarad capacitor or a 0 0.097 nanofarad capacitor, the voltage didn't change, but the frequency was slightly higher than 455. And using a 72 picofarad capacitor, distortion was introduced. The frequency was no longer stable. It would vary between 462 and 464. But eventually it settled at 463, but it fluctuated little. Whereas the other frequencies were very, very stable to the nearest TEF. Now for each of these other frequencies, the output was a nice sine waveform. However, at 463, well above the ideal value of 455, a sine wave was still obtained, but it was a distorted sine wave. It looks something like this. But nevertheless, the circuit was still relatively stable compared to other oscillator circuits. Nevertheless, you could see that the output frequency doesn't really change significantly for a wide range of capacitance values. Changing the capacitance from 72 picofarads to 3.2 nanofarads doesn't change the output frequency that much. For the most part, it's still between 440 and 470 kilohertz. But as you decrease the value of the capacitance, the frequency increases slightly. There's a slight inverse relationship. But for the most part, the output frequency is determined by the resonant frequency of the crystal oscillator, which makes it very good for oscillator applications, especially if you need a very stable output frequency. Now, I do have some other values to mention because I tried this circuit with different crystal oscillators. So for the 455 kilohertz ceramic crystal oscillator, or just ceramic oscillator. The ideal capacitance value, which I mentioned earlier, was 160 picofarads for the circuit that I've used with an output voltage of 3.8. Now I tried using a four megahertz crystal oscillator and the circuit worked with this frequency as well, but I had to use a one nanofarad capacitor which was measured to be 0.76 nanofarads by my multimeter. And the output voltage for that was less. It wasn't 3.8 or 4 volts. It was half of that, 2 volts. 
but the frequency was very, very stable. It was very close to 4.0. 3.999 is basically the same as 4, or very close to it. Now, the waveform at the output was a nice sine wave, which is also good. Now, using a 6 megahertz crystal oscillator, I had to use a 475 picofarad capacitor to make the circuit work. And the output voltage was less, 1.2 volts. So as the frequency increases, the gain of the circuit is reduced. The measured output frequency was 7.9997 megahertz. And the waveform that I got wasn't a nice sine wave. It had some elements of distortion in it. It looks something like this. You could still see a kind of a sine wave in it if it wasn't for this deviation here. But nevertheless, the circuit still worked. And this number should be not 7.997. This should be 5.998. I actually put the value for the next trial there. Now, I also got this circuit to work using an 8 megahertz crystal oscillator. The capacitance that I need to get oscillations going were, or was a 34.6 picofarad capacitor. The output voltage was still about 1.2, maybe a little bit less than that, but close to it. And the output frequency was 7.997 megahertz. Now, I do need to make a correction for the waveform. This waveform actually corresponded to the 8 megahertz crystal oscillator. For the 4 megahertz and the 6 megahertz crystal oscillator, for both of those, I did get a sine wave. But I got this distorted wave using the 8 megahertz crystal oscillator. Using a 12 megahertz crystal oscillator, the circuit failed to oscillate. The lowest capacitance value that I had was a 10 picofarad capacitor. And I put two of them in series to reduce the capacitance to five and it still didn't oscillate. But nevertheless, the Pierce oscillator circuit is very useful and it's very easy to design. And uh, so now you can test it out yourself with these uh, different values. By the way, the JFET transistor that I use, for those of you who might be interested in, it's the uh, 2N5458N channel JFET transistor. For those of you who may wanna test out this circuit as well. Now up to this point, I've been using the two pin crystal oscillators which looks like this. And for these, it's good to use the Pierce crystal oscillator circuit to uh, make them work. But there's also another type of crystal oscillator. And these type of circuits have their own internal circuitry. These are known as the full can four pin crystal oscillator circuits. So they look something like this. Now, when you flip it over, you'll see the four pins. And if you look at the four corners, one of them is at a right angle. The other three are smooth. This corner is pin number one. This is pin seven. And then this is pin eight and pin 14. Now, the numbers could vary depending on the type of crystal oscillator that you're using. But for the one megahertz full can crystal oscillator that I was using, this is what the data sheet had. Now, number seven is the ground pin. Number eight is the output pin. And number 14 is the pin that you connect to the positive portion of the battery. In this case, plus 5V. Pin number one, you really don't have to use that pin. So with this type of device, it's very easy to make a, an oscillator circuit. 
all you need to do is connect pin 14 to a 5 volt power supply and then connect pin 8 to a bypass capacitor and then that goes to the output and then pin 7 goes to ground as well as to the output. So the one that I was using was a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator. Now if you want to you could put a bypass capacitor between pin 14 and 7. In my case it didn't really make a difference but in case your power supply has a lot of impedance it might be useful. A 0.1 microfarad capacitor or higher will suffice. And for the bypass capacitor if you use a high value capacitor it won't make a difference. So you can use 1 microfarad, 10 microfarad or even more it will still work. Because the frequency is relatively high the impedance offered by this capacitor will be low. Keep in mind the capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc. So let me get my calculator. Let's see what the capacitive reactance will be at 1 megahertz or 1 times 10 to the 6 hertz using a 1 microfarad capacitor. 10 to the 6 and 10 to the minus 6 will cancel. So this becomes 1 over 2 pi. The impedance is 0.159 ohms. I mean the capacitive reactance, which is pretty low. But if that's too high for you, you can make this 10 microfarads, in which case the capacitive reactance will be 0.0159 ohms. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to construct the Pierce crystal oscillator circuit using a JFET. And you also know how to generate a very simple oscillator circuit using the full can four pin crystal oscillator device.